Okay, so listen up. Turning JavaScript objects or arrays into JSON strings and then turning them back is not going to be detrim like a detrimental life changer for your development career. But it is one of those things that takes like 5 or 10 minutes to get down once and then you you'll always know what you're doing pretty much. And uh, it's very easy to weasel your way out of. So, for example, if you're using GitHub Copilot, it's very easy to write a comment saying make fetch request and then just accept whatever GitHub Copilot gives you, right? Um, so you don't really need to worry about how do I um, turn JSON into a string? How do I parse that back? How does it work? Learning it once, investing the five to 10 minutes it takes, it's really not much. And I think it will make you more confident in the code you write and it will make you a better developer. And the reason it will make you a better developer, I'm thoroughly convinced, is because it makes working with APIs, which is probably the probably the most um, like uh, often use case you will have, and also cookies and local storage. So essentially anything that uh, requires um, JavaScript as a string way easier and you'll actually get an idea of what you're doing. Um, so I'm working in Next.js. You can also follow along in you know um, just regular JavaScript because the concepts apply everywhere of json.stringify and json.parse. Um, the reason I'm working in Next.js is because we have built an API routes, which I wanna uh, show you how to make an API request. Um, but you, as I said, you can follow along in, um, in anything, just regular JavaScript, I'm in TypeScript, but it doesn't matter, um, the, the principles still apply. So let's make an API request, um, mark this as an arrow function, which is asynchronous because we're going to await uh, the fetch request we're going to make. And then here we're going to say await fetch. And in here goes the URL you want to make an API request to. Now, that's why I'm in Next.js. You can just say HTTP localhost 3000 slash API slash hello, because I uh, didn't change the um, file name. But if you're hosting an express server, and so an API that you own, the URL would go right here. Or if you're making an API request to something like, um, you know, what is it called? Um, Rapid API, Rapid API. Uh, so to an API you don't own, the same thing would apply. Um, you would just paste the URL right here. And then as the parameters, we're gonna say method uh, post, because this is the, uh, the, the case when we want to pass data, that's what we want to take a look at. Then the headers, um, which is going to be plural, are going to be um, content-type. And what are we going to pass? Application slash JSON. And then as the third argument, we want the document body. So because we're making a post request, we can make a body. I don't want to get too much into you know how to make an API request. Um, but in here we can say, well, we want to pass an object and the name is gonna be John, right? Well, wrong, because we're um, using TypeScript, it will mark this as an error. Now we're gonna not gonna make any TypeScript specific things in here, so you can follow along in regular JavaScript, do not worry, um, but let's take a look at the error. So it says type, and then the object we have is not assignable to type body in it, null or undefined. So that's weird, so apparently we can't pass an object. So how about an array? Let's have one, two, three. Well, type number array is not assignable to type body in it null undefined. Okay, that's weird. Let's try to pass a number. Still doesn't work, but we can pass a string. Interesting. So the body accepts a string apparently. So if we were to have an object const to pass, which we want to pass with the API, and let's have a name in here. Name is going to be John. How are we going to pass this JavaScript object to the server? Because if we just paste it here, it doesn't work. And well, because you read the video title, you know the answer. We have uh, JSON methods. So if I go back one step, take a look at what JSON offers, which is built in. It's not a package. You can um, access this regularly in JavaScript. Just type JSON, all capitalized, then dot, and you can see the methods. So we have parse and stringify. And to put this JavaScript object, into a string, we can just pass it into json.stringify, and this will essentially turn this thing into a string. And I've prepared a little example in, in Photoshop of how that looks like. So in the first step, um, let me make a new layer, we are right here, okay? We have the JavaScript object right here. We wanna pass that to the server. Now, how do we do that? Well, with json.stringify, we are converting this object into a string. And how does that look like in practice? Well, it looks like this. So we can take, well, maybe that was a bit 
fast. So it looks like this. It's just the, the object itself, and then it's in quotation marks, so that means it's a string. So if we, for example, go into the console, and there's a lot of errors, uh, and say const person is equal to an object that has a name, and the name property is John. Let's save that, we will get back undefined, and then we can say json.stringify, and then in here we're going to pass the person, and as you can see, we're going to get the exact same string. Well, in this instance we get the slashes, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, in, in Chrome we wouldn't get them, it, it doesn't matter. Um, essentially we get the JavaScript object as a string. And now with that string, interestingly enough, we can pass that to the server. So in the next step, we're going to pass it to the API, so the data we want to pass. And then when we receive the data, we're going to convert it back to an object. So we cannot pass an object directly to the server, that doesn't work, but we can convert it to a string and then back to an object on the server side. So this is server and this is client. And as you can see, I have three art PhDs. I'm an expert in how to draw this shit. Um, Anyways, uh, we can receive it in the API route. Um, so let's try that out. Um, I've prepared the example. So in here, we're going to say um, const body is equal to json.parse. Um, now, the thing is, if you're working with Next.js specifically, um, there is a built-in body parser. Well, I didn't want to uncomment that. There's a built-in body parser, which does all this for you. So essentially what that means, if you don't disable the body parser, which is built in from Next.js version 12, um, version 12 and you can essentially just destructure from the body right away. So you can say const name, because this is what we named the property right here. And we want to destructure from this object directly. So you could also say rec.body.name, but you could also say rec.body and then destructure a name like this. And we can have the name in here. We don't need this anymore. And now when I save that and load the page, um, let me go to localhost 3000 load the page, we can see nothing happens on the front end, but on the back end we get name John because um, we pass the JavaScript object as a string to the server, so we're in the middle step right here, and then on the server side what Next.js does for us, which we would need to do manually um, in regular JavaScript, is um, take in the, the string, that is a JSON string, and then convert it back to a JavaScript object. Now, if you were working in regular JavaScript, how would you do that? Well, with json.parse, and then in here you could put the string. So, um, remember the example I showed you previously, const person is equal to an object where name is John. We're going to have the person. Now let's say const as string is equal to json. Oh, and actually, oh, uh, I need to zoom in a lot. You probably weren't able to see that. json.stringify person. And um, now if we say type type of as string, we can see it's type string. So we converted the um, object into a string. And now if we want to uh, convert it back, const as object is equal to json.parse. So this is essentially the opposite operation we're doing. Um, and we're going to pass it a JSON string as string. And then type of um, as object is an object. So essentially, json.stringify is the opposite of json.parse. So we convert it to a string and we convert it back from a string using this syntax. And now I want to show you one more example. How is this useful? Well, not only when making API requests, but as I mentioned in the beginning, also when um, working with cookies or local storage, both um, very famous use cases. So let's go to our um, app right here, but I'm going to do this in uh, Chrome because I think cookies are a bit easier to see in the uh, Chrome DevTools. There we go. Uh, go to inspect and then to application. And then here we can say, oh, ah, uh, I didn't want to spoil you. That was the example I want to show. Okay, so in here we're going to say uh, const user. Oh, and we also need the const to pass again, which is the name. The name is going to be John, but this can be whatever you want. And we want to set this as a cookie, right? So we're going to say document.cookie is equal to, and then user is equal to this, right? So name should be John. Well, the error, we don't, uh, we don't care about that. We can close this file and uh, let's save that and see what happens when we wanted to do this in Chrome. So let's reload this. And as you can see, the cookie was set. Um, so let me zoom in a bit. You can see the user, which is an object object. 
So that means we cannot set an actual JavaScript object as a cookie. And same thing goes for local storage, by the way. If this was local storage, same thing apply, or session storage, whatever. It does not matter. But instead, what we can do is JSON dot stringify and then in here we're going to say it to pass which means convert the javascript object to a json string which is nothing else than just a regular string essentially um read out the page and well i wanted to do this <laughs> in chrome and as you can see now we have the actual javascript object which is name um john now what happens when we try to pass something in that we can't read so let's say json.parse and then here we're just going to say you know something that is not a json string so let's say uh, for example, hello, let's type enter and we can see unexpected token h hello is not valid JSON. So whenever we want to parse JSON, make sure it is actually valid JSON beforehand, otherwise um, you'll get an error. So what I advise you to do is actually do this in a try catch. So even if json.parse fails, your application doesn't crash. Um, but instead the uh, catch block catches the error and the same thing goes for um, json.stringify and that way we can say json.stringify for example and we can stringify something like an array like this and we'll get back the array as an actual proper json string whereas um, if we don't use json.stringify so for example string which is also um, used to make a string out of something in js and pass the array in here you're gonna see it's a bit different um, so pass the array in here and you're going to see it is not a proper JSON string. So when we try json.parse um, on this string right here, you can see this is not a proper JSON string. Whereas if we use a json.stringify beforehand, so json.parse and then json.stringify, we're essentially getting back the exact same thing because the json.parse cancels out the json.stringify because as i explained earlier they are you know exactly opposite things like um well this um decodes the json this encodes the json so uh, what the result is is just what we initially pass in and nothing really changes about it and yeah that was pretty much everything thank you for watching I really hope you enjoyed this video found it as useful as i did um, learning these concepts and i'll see you in the next one have a good one and bye bye